Okay, welcome to Electron Online. In the previous video, we saw that the concept of integration is finding the area on the need to curve, and we can approximate that by snipping the area on the need to curve into rectangles and calculating what the area is of the rectangles and say that's approximately equal to the area on the need to curve. To illustrate that, we're going to do an example. So here's the function f of x equals x squared plus 2. We have the horizontal axis x, the vertical axis y. We're trying to find the area underneath this curve, and we're going to do it by approximating this. We're going to draw four rectangles. The first rectangle will have a height equal to this. The second rectangle will have a height equal to this. The third rectangle, and then the fourth rectangle. And this is area one, this is area two, this is area three, and this is area four. Now, Let's call this, uh, so x equals 4 is at the end here. Let's say that this is x1, x2, x3, and x4. x1 is equal to 1, x2 is equal to 2, x3 is equal to 3, and x4 is equal to 4. The width of each of the rectangles, let's just call that a delta x. So the width here is a delta x, the width here is a delta x, delta x, and delta x. How about the height of each rectangle? Well, the height here will be the function evaluated at x1. The height here will be the function evaluated at x2. Over here, the height will be the function evaluated at x3. And here, it will be the function evaluated at x4. So that's the height of each rectangle, f at x1, f evaluated x2, f evaluated x3, and f evaluated x4. Now, the total area will simply be equal to a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus a4. So that would be equal to the area of the first rectangle, which is the width, delta x, times the height, which is the function evaluated at x sub 1, plus the width of the second one, delta x, multiplied times the function evaluated at x sub 2, plus the width, delta x, times the function evaluated at x sub 3 and the width of the fourth rectangle multiplied times the function evaluated at x sub 4. In each case, those represent the height of each of the rectangles. I can factor out a delta x, so this is equal to a delta x times the function evaluated at x sub 1 plus the function evaluated at x sub 2 plus the function evaluated at x sub 3 was the function evaluated at x sub 4. What is delta x equal to? Well, delta x will be equal to the total width divided by the number of rectangles. In this case, we can say that delta x will be equal to 4 divided by 4, this 4 rectangles, which is equal to 1. And of course, by inspection, we can see that's the case. What about the height in each case? What is f of x sub 1? f of x sub 1 is the function evaluated at x sub 1, and x sub 1 is equal to 1. So f, when x is equal to 1, is equal to, that would be 1 squared, plus 2, which is equal to 3. Function evaluated at x equals 2 is equal to 2 squared, plus 2, which is equal to 6. The function evaluated at x equals 3, that's equal to uh, 3 squared, plus 2, which is equal to 11. And finally, the function evaluated at 4, x equals 4, is equal to 4 squared plus 2, which is equal to 18. Those would be the heights of the four rectangles. And we also now know the width, so let's go ahead and plug that in. So this is equal to 1 times the height of the first rectangle, which is 3, plus the height of the second rectangle, which is 6, plus the height of the third rectangle, 11, plus the height of the fourth rectangle, 18. Finally, when we add all those together, 3 plus 6 is 9, plus 11 is 20, plus 18 is 38. So that's equal to 38. Area total of all the four rectangles equals 38, which is approximately equal to the area need to curve. I'm sure it's slower than that, it's less than that, but it's fairly good approximation. How can we improve upon that? Well, there's two ways. One way would be to go ahead and have more rectangles. 8, 12, 16, 20, 100, 1,000. And again, in the limit, as the number of rectangles goes to infinity, that area will be exactly equal 
to the area near the curve. And again, by definition, when the number of rectangles goes to infinity, that's the same as taking the integral of that function. Let's go ahead and do that and see what we get. So we're going to check that answer. The area is equal to the integral of the function times dx, and again, the limits of integration from 0 to 4. So from 0 to 4, which is equal to the integral of the function is x squared plus 2 times dx, integrated from 0 to 4. When we integrate that, we get the following. This is equal to x to the third power divided by 3. Remember, we add 1 to the exponent, divide by the new exponent, plus 2 x to the first power, because we went from 2x to the zero power, to 2x to the first power, divided by 1, so we just leave that there, and the whole thing evaluated from 0 to 4. Plug in the upper limit, we get 4 cubed divided by 3 plus 2 times 4, and then when we plug in the lower limit, we get nothing but zeros, because when we plug in 0, we get 0, so it would be 0 cubed divided by 3, plus 2 times 0. And of course, that simply disappears. And the actual area, by using integration, notice we get 64 divided by 3, plus 8. 64 divided by 3 is 21 and a third, plus 8. That's 21 and a third, plus 8, which is equal to 29 and a third. That is the actual area you need to curve using integration. Notice the approximated area, 38, isn't that far off, but probably a little bit further than most people would like. In the next video, we actually have a better method to find an approximated value. Again, these techniques are very helpful to understand what integrals are. So let's go ahead and do our next, uh, next example, the next video, and then you see how we eventually just always converge to, if you want the actual area, Simply take the integral of the function, evaluate it from the two limits, from the left limit to the right limit, or the lower limit to the upper limit, and you get the exact value of the area. And that's how it's done.